Well, well, we're live, I think. And something happened today to you? Well, actually, it happened to me, too. Our wives. Our wives know each other, by the way. That's weird. Yeah. They, they often lament they often lament that fact that they know each other or that no that they that that we know each other oh yes that is that is objective fact as a matter of fact that is a, yeah. can I say that objective fact as a matter of fact so they like to they like to go on their walks. daily power walk it's not a daily power walk is it it's close yeah it's pretty close regular power walks and yeah. They went for a walk today, right? Yeah. And they're 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 heroic women. They're courageous. Um, they went out into a thunderstorm. They went out into a thunderstorm. And got, got caught in a downpour. Yeah. And my cell phone rang. Yeah. Yep. And your cell phone rang, and the cell phone uh, the request was, "Come get us, please, man, please, Mister Man." Rain. Wait, but Wait, it gets better. We're cause... stuck in the rain. Wait, they but... said they're stuck in the rain. I, I got my pants back on. Well, okay, so you had car. your pants. Why were your pants off in the first place? Oh, I was lounging. Okay, are Seriously. you sure that's that's all you're doing? There's I don't. My wife is a, wasn't in the house, so yeah, I was lounging. G-rated show. Okay. Yes. Okay, so just, he's I, just lounging. So my daughter says, your phone's ringing. So I went and looked. It was my wife. So I said, what's going on? She goes, we're stuck in the rain. Come and get us, please. And I had made the offer if it opens up on you call me i'll come get you just let me know where you are so um i get there and by the time i get there it stopped raining <laughs> it stopped raining so they could have just waited it out right well yeah, and then like, proceeded with the rest we're of done. the walk and then you got there and even though it wasn't raining they're like no man we're done we're done we're done there's all that big juicy comfy car yeah my yeah. wife my wife came home and she was like I'm back. I'm like, wait, didn't you just leave for something? And yeah. So by the way, everybody, this is full auto. And uh, my name is Paul. I am Paul Gordon and I'm with uh, Prof. the professor, professor Rambo, prof, the professor and Mar no, Marianne. No, there's no, there is no Marianne though. There's no Marianne in this story. That just, little Marianne was hot. I, I, I know. I, well, I, I mean, Hey, it's the age old debate. It's Wilma or Betty. And then the other one is Marianne or Ginger. Oh, uh, Betty for sure. Are you thinking Betty? Oh, without question. Okay, yeah, I'm 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 a Wilma person myself, oh. I, but, were, but I'm a Marianne were, person. Then you oh, you were. I'm I, a Marianne person and well, a Wilma were, person. Well, Wilma was a redhead. I understand. I, 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 I'm going in different directions. I get that. Hey, they called her Ginger. You know, I've is been that she was a redhead? I, I didn't get that. Oh my I God. just got that. You just got that now. I just got that. Just oh this moment at Ginger. this exact moment in time, I have finally figured it out. I'm very proud of my you. My life will never be the same. Will it? Will it? I think it will be the same. I think I think that you're going to do just fine. So what what do we have lined up for today? Because you, you came up with this your show, man. I'm just Good I'm just stuff. I'm just the tech support here. That's all I am. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to shut up and let you take over the rest of the show. That's about time you did something right. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. So 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 what are we talking about today? We got we got some media meaty meaty well, stuff on I, the hook. I came across an article that was talking about how the military had put out a um a a recommendation, a suggestion, a uh, to industry that they were looking potentially to uh, purchase ten thousand firearms that were not chambered in five five six, but something greater like seven point six two. Right. And um, and there you see I, the I, article, folks. There behind him. Well, this isn't the article. Actually, I couldn't find your article. I found a different article. But it has some yeah. interesting stuff in it. What's the terminology that they use? The, the military put out a request from industry the US, leaders. The U.S. Army is considering an interim switch back to the 762 millimeter caliber in standard infantry rifles. Well, and this is at soldiersystems.net. Now, right now, I'm on firearms hmm. blog, which I'm going to come back to that. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the soldiersystems.net. This might have been originally okay 
According to multiple sources, what started out as directed requirement for a 7.62 NATO designated rifle, whatever, uh, for issue to infantry, infantry rifle squads, I'm skipping words, folks, has grown in scope to increase the basis of issue to all personal personnel in brigade combat teams and perhaps beyond. And I'm skipping over here. It's important to establish right up front that 762 is not the Army's end goal. The interim component of the capabilities name relies on a plan to eventually adopt one of the, oh, that's interesting, one of the 6.5 family of intermediate calibers. Currently, elements of the Army are evaluating 260, 264 USA, and 277 USA. The 260 is commercially available while 264 USA and 277 USA are developments in the Army Marksman's list. I don't know anything about those calibers. Do you? Very little. So, um, so, so they're really thinking of this isn't this isn't to adopt the 308. This is to 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 transition to it. Or to, to transition to the 6.5s. So this is a transition from from 5.56 to 308 to something that's in the. In, in the in between, them. but yeah. so why jump up to the seven six two? I guess I well, guess if you're going to build a platform on seven six two and then adapt it for like uh, uh, they're having issues. Um, look, the M sixteen was originally designed to shoot uh, from a twenty inch barrel. They cut down the the twenty inch barrel um, to sixteen inches and eighteen inches and made these carbines, which is great. But the problem with that. Is you lose velocity on that 556 cartridge, which is you, which it, is its calling card, which is its correct. thing. Right. So if you're not at 3,000 feet per second when it hits your target, meaning a bad guy trying to kill you, you're just poking a hole through them. Your your the energy isn't making the the projectile yaw and cause tremendous damage and put the guy down. It's just poking a hole like an ice pick. So what they're finding is with these shorter barrels because they want shorter barrels, because they're more maneuverable, is that they're not doing the job in, in, close, in, close, in close quarters. Right. The other, the other component is, out in Afghanistan, you have guys who are shooting at Americans and other uh, NATO troops with old 303 Enfields from a quarter mile away and doing damage. Yeah, the Enfields are doing the job. Right, and, those old bolt axes. And it's not the like Enfield so much I, as it's the caliber. Right, the, the World War One and World War II uh, that are an issue because when Americans and Western troops try to return fire, they're shooting out of carbines that are 16 and 18 inches uh, with a cartridge that is an intermediary cartridge it's, so the, it was yeah, never it's, designed it's, to go out to three four five six hundred right. yards and, and you've even lessened it more with the shorter barrels correct so these guys so, are out there basically fighting a range war with a, an urban weapon correct and so whether you're in an urban setting with a shorter barrel where the 556 has become right there. Uh, neutered by the shorter barrel uh, or you're out in the great wide mountain ranges of Afghanistan, and someone's taking pot shots at you from six, seven, you know, a thousand yards away, you don't have enough gun. So you got to get closer to them. Well, in the process of getting closer to them, you're exposing yourself and you're an easy target. So they want something that's got a little bit more get up and go, like a 30 out six or a 308, to reach out and touch the bad guys. So if they're going to go with a 308, um, I think there are better choices for those two environments it, with the same 308 cartridge, the, the same um, parent cartridge. You have the 7mm 08, which actually has better ballistics than the 308. It's a, it's a 308. The 308 is a 762 by, by what, 51? Yeah, but the 762, The 762 is a bigger, heavier bullet. The 7mm 08 is just the 308 neck down to 7mm. And it has much better 
performance than the 308. It it has similar energy transfer at distance. In, in most cases, it exceeds the 308, but it shoots flatter. So in a place like Afghanistan, where you need distance, you want a hard-hitting, flat, flat cartridge. Right. In the package of a 308, the 7 millimeter 08 is superior. If, on the other hand, your objective is to hit somebody hard in close and personal, in close quarters, then the 308 is going to do the job, but there's things out there that will do the job better in the same cartridge, in the same package, which is the 338 Federal. The 338 Federal has a much heavier bullet, better penetration, and can do the job much better punching through obstacles, for instance, than the 308. So the 308 is a nice in the middle cartridge, but it depends on what you're going to use this cartridge for. If they're going to transition to the 6.5, like a, any, any of those uh, uh, six millimeter cartridges, I say they should transition to the seven millimeter uh, because it shoots flat, it hits harder. It would even be much better in close uh, quarters combat than the 5.56 five, or the 6.5. And when you need to take it out to range, that thing can put th targets down at a thousand yards easy, easy. So, you know, I'm a big fan of the the six millimeters, but I think the seven millimeter is superior. So that's that's my spiel. So this article that I'm looking at, I'm going back to the firearm blog. He has some opinions here now. Understanding that they are talking about going to the seven six two two transition. Uh, bearing that in mind, still, this guy is uh, trying to get the name of the person who wrote this article, Nathan F. Nathan F. wrote this article. And he he says, I don't want to ed editorialize, but I'm going to. <laughs> so this is uh, this is what he's he, – I'll, I'll go through these items, see if you want to address them or whatever. Uh, so his argument for going to the 762 or not going to the 762 unit endurance would be cut in half. The infantry platoon would go from carrying 16,700 rounds of ammunition to 9,400 rounds, a decrease of almost 44%. This means that units would run out of ammunition in a little over half the time that they would with the current ammunition configuration. Got anything to say about that? Uh... There are. How about very, how about how about ten rounds of ineffective ammo in a situation is 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 really no good compared to two rounds of effective ammo. Correct. Uh, you know this reminds me of a food analogy that I uh, shared with somebody. Forgive the, me for boring you, but <laughs> this is so apropos. Um, you know, f food today has so many chemicals in it and. Uh, pesticides and preservatives and microparticles and co colorings and you name it, right? Um, but when you look at the average meal a person had a hundred years ago over the span of a week, the nutritional value there was no was was less than a McDonald's cheeseburger. A McDonald's cheeseburger, as crappy as that is nutritionally, had more nutrition in it than the average person ate in a in a week. A hundred years ago, fact. And it, I'm, it I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not championing. And when but, we say average person, we're talking about you know the hoi polloi kind of average person. Right. So, you know, people complain that there are all these chemicals in there today, and yeah, those chemicals will probably shave two or three years off of your life without question. But all the additional nutrition that we get from frozen foods, because we can store food all all year long from canned food because we can store food all year long from being able to get a tomato in February increases your life by 20 years. I insist that you say February, February. I say February. No, actually. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, y y these things are bad for you, but the additional nutrition that we get from the food processing that we get today will give you an, an additional 20 years. So, you can go and back 100 years ago and not have any tomatoes in January or February. 
so there's zero nutritional value there. Or you can go and get a frozen or a unripe a tomato that was picked unripe. A Monsanto tomato. Yeah, or whatever it is. But you're still getting some nutritional value in it, even though there's some harmful stuff in there. Same analogy. How so? I'd rather have a 308. I'd rather have two rounds of 308 that'll kill a dude than a hundred rounds of a, of a five a five six that or twenty two just... long rifle that uh, will get me killed. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah. So that argument it it really depends. You know the intermediate cartridge is great as an intermediate cartridge. What is the purpose that the military is? I, I feel pretty good that, that the five five six within you know with it, if if I were to use the five five six to defend my home in short range, I feel pretty good about that. I, feel okay. I would say anything inside of three hundred yards is pretty dead with the five five six, dude. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna hammer you, especially, man. It's going yeah, especially to... if you're gonna use it with an eighteen inch barrel or greater. Yeah, where it can, where it can burn some of the powder in the barrel and actually become an effective three thousand feet per second cartridge. Now let me go to the second point. Are you ready for the second point, or are um, you not done? I'm here. You want more food analogy? No, I do not. I know. Okay. I know you love your foods, and so do I. Uh, hey, I'm Greek, dude. And here okay. the thing is, the thing is, you're 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 making the case for processed foods, but you're a total fresh food guy, man. I mean, Look, I am because the closer the source that you can get your food, the better, of course. Right, right. But so, so but you know, he, he's not a he's shit. Not... Even the shit today has more nutrition in it than the average person consumed a week ago, a, a hundred uh, years ago, uh, for the whole week. Well, yeah, and then let's go back two hundred years when you know, uh, two hundred years and beyond. You know, uh, uh, maybe a hundred years it was true too. You know, they they, they couldn't even rely uh, on clean water, so right. everybody drank alcohol. Kids included, they had oh, to. <laughs> now that's something we should go back to. <laughs> Let yeah. me say this categorically: that, that is something that, that is very important yes. that we resort. To. Okay, so let's, go ahead. Go let's, ahead. Let's, let's all turn to beer for everyone. But the, some of their beers are nasty. So, so the second point here: soldier training would take take much longer to reach similar proficiency levels, and more regular training would be necessary to maintain. Seven six two by five one produces substantially more recoil than 5.56, five, even in heavier weapons, and it takes more skill to master weapons in this caliber. While this may not be a problem for the civilian deer hunter or recreational shooter, it is a problem for a fighting force which must, which must train thousands of recruits of different backgrounds and natural skill levels to proficiency, especially when the whole point of moving to 7.62 would be to give more lethality at long range where shots are even harder. Okay, when men were men, they went to war with thirty out six. They they fought in the 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 the, the, the three zero range. Yeah, regular. Um, and when the army relaxed, or not just the army, the military was forced to relax its standards. Was it under? What, you mean because certain, because they did away with the draft and now they? No, not the draft. Well, that was no, part they of allowed. It. Yeah, but they. They allowed women into into battle units. I'm sorry, dude. Most women cannot carry an 80 pound pack. Most, most, not all. most. I, most I, women I, cannot I, carry, I'm, carry. I'm open to giving anyone a chance to prove themselves, regardless of of whatever. But statistically, Absolutely. it's not going to happen for women. Statistically, it it's been proven that the men actually divvy up the weight of the women and they drag them through the marches. Uh, they just are not the same physical. Build. Yeah, never they mind. Never, never mind the damage, the the actual physical damage that women are now suffering, like correct, like lifelong physical damage from going through these programs. Correct, uh, to knees, to elbows, to uh, shoulders, to spines, to it, it's it's bad. It's and, real and bad. They, they, there was a political agenda, and I, look, I'm all for women being in the military. Uh, the Israelis do it pretty well, but the Israelis know. Oh, even what, they got issues. They even they're discovering. Whoa. Of course, but well, this integration but, didn't work out quite like we thought. Yes, but there are positions that women excel in, and those things that men excel in, you put men in, and those things that women excel in, you put women in. Like they've kind like, of figured it out. Like the sandwich making brigade. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not, that's not what I'm totally talking about. Totally kidding. But seriously, but seriously, I do want a sandwich. 
<laughs> I know women who can handle re- who can handle recoil. Uh, who are, I don't know, 130 pounds, and I know men who are 200 pounds who can't handle recoil. It, it, everyone's different. But generally speaking, if, if guys 100 years ago could shoot 30 out 6 all day long in their M1 Garands, and our guys now can't shoot 308, really? That's p- pretty pathetic. But and I understand. It's still you can a, put a 5.56 five, in anyone's hands and teach them pretty quickly because there's little recoil. Well, if that's the case, teach them how to shoot with a 22 long rifle and then hand them the 308. If that's the case, if you're afraid of people developing flinches, if you're afraid of this, that, and the other thing, yeah, you start them off with 22s, and a couple months later you switch to 308. I, I just want to say that the advances in recoil uh, control and mitigation – are quite rapid, uh, so yeah, you can go online and I, find guys I, shooting, yeah, shooting uh, three hundred win mag uh, with one hand because well, of the muzzle brakes that are that are existing. What is it the the the, the 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 latest uh, the, the the fifty cal uh, the BMG? Uh, yeah, the BMG. The 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 new, the new BMG is uh, if you if you Google. Google, it might be uh, Demolition Ranch 50 cal recoil. Google that. Oh, oh yeah. And you're going to see that that a 50 cal, that, that he is able to fire that with one hand off his hip and control it, r- relatively speaking, control it. So I think you're talking about the 300 wind mag that he's shooting no, that way. No, no, no. This is the, the, the 50 cal. Wow. This is the... Oh. Uh, that makes the point. The, well, recoil the, mitigation, it, it, recoil is mitigation is is advancing rapidly, and there's there's stuff coming out all the time. So I I, I would be I I could think that they could come up with uh, a new rifle or pick something that's already out there in 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 that caliber that significantly uh, lessens the recoil, especially when you're talking about semi-auto. Correct. So. It's what you get used to. That's the bottom line. I, I, that argument is pretty weak for me. But what's the next one? The next one, battlefield communications would suffer. One of the most significant observations that came from TFB's recent live fire exercise with World War II era weaponry con- conducted. Well, you're not talking about World War II era weaponry. Conducted by Miles was that 30 caliber weapons produce a much larger volume of noise per shot which greatly increases the difficulty of hearing commands given by officers and squad leaders. Yeah, that's called modern radio telecommunications. Most guys have, most guys who are kicking in doors and going into buildings have um, hearing protection that also has radio in it. So they're talking, uh, one, to stop the noise and two, to communicate better. Uh, so what is he talking about? What what? It's irrelevant. I'm not sure how many how many I don't know uh, how many folks are. I don't know the the situation in Army. How many folks are equipped with uh, radio communications or not? But I know I've had some experience. You know, the you, you wear even even when you go out, you, you wear earplugs. Just firing the five five six, you have your earplugs in. You have to have earplugs in. Uh, I mean, little known factoid: if you're going into battle, you're not going into battle without ear protection. Probably not going to be in battle long if you don't have ear protection. So the sound is already muffled. So I'm not sure what the point. Well, he's is. saying he's saying that you're not going to be able to hear your commander in the background telling you, giving you commands, you know, and orders and what have you. Again. Modern telecommunications. Um, the amount of I, I don't know. I think that's, that's I think that's a somewhat valid point because I think if if you're going to equip everyone with that radio technology, that could be quite expensive. Yeah, I think most are. Oh, okay. Point. If they are, well, then that's another matter yeah. altogether. I'm... The most battle line groups that are. Uh, by the way, our our reason. By, by the way, our our reason for discussing this and looking at well, what is the army doing? If you're looking at what militaries are doing, it gives you a good sense of of 
maybe, you know, they're looking at defense and offense. They're looking at defensive and offensive power. And whatever they're looking at, you should pay attention to because well, they're probably on to something. Let's not forget. Most likely. The, the 308 is designed to kill men. Oh, it's absolutely right. I don't know. The 556 is designed to wound men. And now what? And now they've now they're like, you know what? We no longer want to wound people because it's just not paying off for us anymore. It's it's you're not fighting these massive land battles right now. So the the strategy behind you know clogging up their reserves and making them use whatever stuff they got to use to take care of uh, wounded people. It's it's not quite the same issue. No, it's not. It's not a massive land war that we're par- preparing for with the Soviet Union. It's you're fighting wars in the mountains, and if you wound the guy and his buddies are there and they extract him, he's coming back to the battlefield in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to have to re-engage that guy. If you if you popped him once, you want him to go down, and you don't want him to come back up. You don't Ever. you you don't want to repeat business. That no. that is that is the one place where you don't want repeat business. So, so look, the five five six has killed a lot of people. Um, it's a deadly cartridge. Uh, in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing, y- you got problems, and you can oh, have I, 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 I love the five five six. I'm a fan. I do too. Uh, I'm a fan because of the the reasons that this guy's quoting. It's easy to shoot. It's it's dude. You go out to the, to the Lots, target. You can have a lot of ammo with you easily. And you go sh- you go shooting. You you plinking. You do whatever. It's a fun gun to I, shoot. So I, I I laugh at these stories where they're like, oh, they had he had ninety rounds on him. He had two hundred rounds, and I'm like, dude, ninety rounds is like, it's like one magazine. And in uh, and chambered and and four other magazines suddenly you know three round magazines you're talking 150 rounds right there all right no uh, yeah 150 rounds that's well, quite that's, easy quite easy and, and, that's not and that is that's hardly daunting that is the benefit of that cartridge right that said if you're going if you're kicking indoors in Iraq. Uh, you want something that's going to drop the guy right away, that's going to transfer the energy right away, that's not going to poke him in the leg like a nice pick. You want his leg to get blown off because if he's shooting at you, you need to neutralize him as quickly as possible. And and now, the, and the five five six is not a breach. It's not no, breach, and that's very why, breach powerful. That's why this cartridge isn't working well there, and it's not working well in Afghanistan because the conditions are different than the battles that were anticipated when the cartridge is introduced, which is a massive land war with against the Soviets and the Iron Curtain, everyone behind the Iron Curtain, and you wanted to wound as many of them as possible to take them out of the fight and have guys carrying their buddies out of the fight back to triage. Um, it's a different war. And it's funny that the Russians switched to the, what's it, the 455? What, what am I thinking? Is it the 455? 556? Five four five. five the four, Russians five. switched to to the five four five for the same exact reason, because it shot flat. It was easy to teach people to shoot. It was it, a lot. You can get a lot more rounds. It was a lot more accurate than the seven six two by thirty nine, and they wanted to wound Western soldiers, NATO soldiers, and get their buddies to drag them off the battlefield and tie all those people up. That ain't the war we're in now. You don't want to wound people. There you go. The Russians are their their next generation uh, assault rifle. This is actually from April 27th. This is in Varying Arms. And it's the A. uh, Where is it? Uh, Oh, no, no. This is. is, Yeah, it's 2016, not 2017. Sorry. It's the A545 is the new rifle that they're working on, which is chambered in that 545 that. uh, Mr. Professor Rambo was talking about. Well, the five for five has been around since Afghanistan, uh, since they fought in Afghanistan. It's it's they've had it for a long time. It's just that these NATO troops are realizing that that's a great cartridge. Uh, yeah, it's a great cartridge when you have one organized army against another organized army, and they're going face to face, equipment to equipment, you know, down into a battlefield. This ain't that. 
you, you, you want... It, it's funny because when you think of the history of the cartridge, the more rounds you have in a firearm, the smaller the cartridge becomes. And so if you think about, hey, you only had one cartridge or one ball in a musket. He said ball. Yeah. That ball was 50 or 60 caliber, right? Yeah. Because if you if you nick the guy, you wanted it. If you nicked him, you wanted him to well, split in half. Because you needed to because you didn't have a right. follow-up shot. Correct. So as the cartridges develop through the ages and you're, you get more and more cartridges and more and more repeat shots, the cartridges get smaller and smaller. It makes sense. But now we're at a point where you are not getting follow-up shots because the guy's hiding behind a rock up in a mountain. And, you, and if and you get a not... shot off in him and you hit him, you want to rip his shoulder out. You don't want to poke a hole in them. Yeah, because because what you're dealing with right now, at least, is you're not dealing. And, and, and this is, you know, for you preppers out there, most likely this is what you're dealing with is you're, you're not going to be dealing against, you know, a wave of of troops or a wave of invaders uh, uh, coming at you. You're going to be dealing with with uh, small groups of people spread out. And, yeah, you're you're. It's going to be much easier for those small groups of people to dodge, we take cover, than when you have a whole wave of people, man. And then it's just basically, it's a numbers game. Everybody's just blasting away. And that's, then the 556 five, is great for that. But it's not so great when you're dealing with spread out. Yeah, yeah don't give up your 3030s just yet. I, Who, I love that cartridge. Who, who's talking about getting rid of the 3030? Well, I'm just saying it is as a viable option. If your if your home is being invaded by like 15 dudes and you got a 3030, you got a pretty good chance. You know, the semi-auto 3030 will rifle, drop you. Oh. It, it's essentially a a, a souped-up AK-47 cartridge if you compare the two. So, it's a good intermediate cartridge. Um anything in that range is fantastic as an intermediate battle cartridge. But what the Army's discovered is what everyone's been saying for years. It ain't enough for close-in work and for long-distance shooting. It's good for as an intermediate cartridge. It's, right. It, it, and, it's... and here's the other thing. You don't need to have everyone in a platoon with 308. You know, you well, they're not talking shooters. about they're not talking about having everyone in a platoon or so select or division. Yeah, but you know, if you got let's say you got a group of twenty guys, right? Well, your group of twenty guys, fifteen guys can have five five six, and five guys would have three oh eight, and those three oh eights could be uh, rigged to anything from breaching firearms to you know designated marksmen. Uh, you don't have to have you know they have like the squad. Uh, machine gun that shoots the 5.56, five, which is great, but it ain't good at distance. It's not as good at distance as the same rig set up with a 308 or 7 millimeter 08 or 338 Federal. I got one last, one last. Uh, What's he saying? He says, Army. U.S. Army units would lose their fire superiority at short range. One of the major infantry combat lessons of World War II. North Korea and Vietnam was that he who shoots the most tends to win, or at least makes it very, very hard on the other guy. The larger 7.62 caliber brings with it a serious disadvantage in this area, which is why it and other similar calibers have been virtually universally dropped as standard rifle rounds in military forces all around the world. Yeah, that's not true. There are still military forces around the world that are using the G2s, Sorry, the G3s, the Fenthals, um, and lots of other battle rifles. Yeah, a lot of those same countries that I'm talking about also have 5.56, especially the Western-oriented ones. Well, we just talked uh, about the Russians actually going to the uh, to the five. The five four five. So they're kind of they're going they're fitting it. his trend that he's talking about. Well, that trend happened a long time ago. I mean. Uh, <laughs> 
how many wars are we going to fight where it was like World War Two? You know, in the last 100 years, we haven't, well, less than 100 years, more like 80 or 90, we haven't fought a war like World War II. Uh, Korea comes the closest. The, every, the, the wars that we... V- Vietnam fighting, had some, some, definitely some major battles with uh, large groups of uh, troops fighting. Had some major, major battles. Yeah, but it's not the same. Well, it's not it wasn't like... sustained. It was just in isolated cases, but still, it happened. Correct. And I think, I personally, I think the American troops would have been better served with the M14 over the M16 in that war. Um, I don't, I don't care what they say about, oh, the guy who shoots the most downrange makes it harder. Yeah, that may be true, but again, I can pop holes. And guys, and they keep coming, or I can like shoot off a limb. So right, much... you, you, you pretty much yes, you could you could knock five uh, holes in a guy that may eventually kill him, may, uh, or you could knock that one hole that will, even if it doesn't kill him, it'll probably put him down. It'll Correct. disable him like immediately. It's like Correct. you know. And if, go ahead. And if you know, I. All of the armies have switched to an intermediate cartridge. That's fine. But an intermediate cartridge was only one implement on the battlefield. There were others. There were long-range cartridges, too. When you look at World War II, you know, when the Russians start introducing their intermediate cartridge in the AK-47, there were other cartridges on the battlefield that the Russians were using uh, that were devastating. Um, there were just, it wasn't the only thing that we, they were using. There, there were a mix of cartridges because they knew there were a mix of conditions. We have switched primarily to the 5.56 and only the 5.56, and that's a problem. You need to have a mix. Right. <laughs> you, you need to have a mix. That's, that is the Which problem. Is, and the reason they don't like having a mix is because then the operations of getting all those different ammos out to Get a little bit more soldiers, complicated. It's a lot more complicated than if you're just shipping out all the same bullets. So we, we, went, we, we talked about this, uh, this one story way longer than I thought we would, which is fine, totally fine. I think that I, I I'm I'm ass, I'm assuming your 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 take is it's a it's a good development and uh, for for the U.S. Army, but my take is so. my take is you should uh, you should seriously considering ha- consider having a 308 uh, in your arsenal uh, because if you're just relying on 556 five, for future conditions you might find yourself on the wrong end of a bad situation. Well, if you're talking to preppers, then I would add this, that just like the military needs to have a diverse um, arsenal of small arms on the battlefield, I would say if you're in that situation, you need to have a diverse group of people who can handle diverse different cartridges that you can work with. If, if you're in that situation, if you're in a shit hit the fan situation, and it's just you with your 5.56, five, good luck. Yeah, good luck. 5.56 five, five, you... is not going to save. Even if it's just you with a 308, also good luck. Correct. But if it's you and your brother and your cousin and your good friend and family and you all get together and you have a good base, but you have some diversity, that's important. So if, if that's what your motivation is, and not everyone's motivation is the same, but if that's your motivation, that not only do you need to diversify your arsenal, but you need to make sure that you're on the same page with the people that you think you're going to be relying on for those situations. And make sure that you're all equipped in the way that you think. If your role is going to be a designated marksman and what you have is a twenty two pistol, you haven't prepared very well. <laughs> oh, that would be an understatement. So, yeah. so, 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 so on that note, go ahead. Time to move on. I was going to say, let's, uh, I, 
of all the stories that uh, we have lined up, we're only going to get to probably one more. So I am Yay, one more. I am deciding on more black women are buying guns for self defense. I think that's the story that we should most cover next. What do you think? Because we got a couple other choices. We've got the the raw video of the uh, the, the the idiots who got themselves killed, the bounty hunters. We've got uh, the Czech president, and we got this. Which one would you pick? First of all, let's just let's just say real quick: the Czech president, rock on. The, <laughs> good, good move. Yes. The um, Milos and, and Zeman. You should look up what he said. He said essentially that citizens should arm themselves in case of terrorist attacks. I, I would say instead of the word citizen, I would say people, people yeah. in general. If you want to, if you want to protect yourself, protect yourself. Yep. Don't rely on the state if you don't have to. And he's going to have problems with the European Union. That's what it boils down to. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, because they have a different philosophy about firearms. Next story. Um, the raw video of the bounty hunters. Two bounty hunters pretending to be federal agents uh, try to try to grab somebody, and he shoots them, and they shoot him, and they're all dead. It's terrible. The, the whole way that was is handled, it was. You know what? Let's not talk about it. Let's maybe we'll do it next week. Yeah, but just that's what we were going to talk about. But far more interesting for me is the empowerment. Oh, this is a great story. of a group of people who I believe are currently suffering through modern Jim Crow. Absolutely, denying yep. people the ability to protect themselves is racist. <laughs> Wait, do you? So what we're going to do? We're going to play a video here and. <laughs> what do you hear what the progressive dude has to say when when uh when a when a when a strong woman uh de declares that she wants to protect herself it's it's pretty inflammatory and by the way you get to see on the oan the whatever it's called the what, what does oan stand for i can't remember you're you're going to see when when tori uh uh t tony tony whatever her name is lauren uh, when she when she originally moved over to the Blaze, they brought in a Tommy Lauren clone. So you get to see the Tommy Lauren clone. So enjoy that. We're going to play this video, and then we're going to come back and talk about this. Liz. All right, Antonia, let me turn to you first. This is a very interesting statistic, I think. Women are the fastest. Women in general are the fastest growing demographic of gun owners in America. Black women are now the fastest, even among women, the fastest racial demographic turning uh, to guns for self-defense. Why is that, Antonia? Absolutely. You know, I think it's important to say, regardless of what um, the, the stats show or what the media is saying right now, that... Um, it's not about Trump. It's not a political issue. It's really a self-defense issue. Um, women. It's not a political general, like issue. Before, it's just self-defense. But particularly black women are realizing in the places that they live um, that they're not safe and they can't they can't uh, rely on the police. They can't rely on um, you know a, a father figure, which unfortunately a lot of them don't have in the home or even a spouse in the home. They have to rely on themselves. And so the more that they're realizing that and realizing that having a gun and gun ownership is this extension of their own independence, uh, the more that black women are saying, you know what, yeah, I'm going to be a gun owner and I'm going to learn how to use it for self-defense. Right. And Joel, let me turn to you. At the same time, I mean, you hear this from Here Antonia. Comes you Joel, see the, the man. At the same time, liberals are comparing the NRA. They're saying that gun ownership and the NRA are worse than ISIS. Why? Well, two things. First, um, I reject the premise that uh, there is this epidemic of black women who do not have, quote, uh, black men at home to take care of them. One, I think a lot of black women would not appreciate uh, that type of generalization. And two, He's that does for not black reflect women. the African-American community that I know. That's number one. Number two, I think the way you make women and all Americans safe and black women safe is you make sure that they can have access to health care. You make sure that they have access to How you make uh, good them safe government is you give services. them health care and you make good sure government that services. They have fair pay in the workplace. And fair pay. Those are the things you do to make people oh, safe. Oh, that's so Look, nice. Wait, wait a second. Joel, let me, let me just ask yeah. you. So isn't after that, she's been isn't raped, that you, yeah. Ryan, telling women pay. how to make right. choices and for themselves, services. how to best keep themselves and, safe? You know, isn't that you telling women what to do? The government. More dependency. And I have to say, the fact that you need government services is a way to do it, too. Are you done playing? No, no, Joel, go ahead. You can jump in in just a second. But, Joel, isn't that you telling women what to do? 
Well, I, I am I am the male on this segment, so you, you, you did ask my opinion. So I guess in this I guess in this instance I'm offering the male perspective on this, um, and I know better not to tell any woman what to do. But I, I will say this: you know, polling backs up what I say. How uh, goes to the polling argument? Almost Americans believe in background checks and stricter gun control regulations. Um, last Appeal year, to Harvard popularity. did a study that said that over half of women polled want a president, want a commander in chief who's going to take action on gun control. So. It's not just me. It's not just me sitting here in a studio. It's not just uh, him. There's this. a whole bunch a, of a, other a lot idiots of women in like this country, him. Uh, reflect that belief. But again, I think there are a lot of other ways to keep women and keep all Americans safe, other than giving them a gun. Right. That, that's, that's the closing line. There, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna click this off. I think there are other ways uh, to keep women safe, other than giving them a gun. That's, that's, he's a feminist. Well, this guy is a freaking feminist telling over, the strong black woman, you don't need a gun, girl. You need, you need to be able to have an abortion on demand. That's what you need. That's what's going to make you safe. There are other things that will make you safe. Oh, yeah. Pit bulls will make you safe. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah, good, big, good, big good fences, dog. Alarm good dog. systems. Yeah, but healthcare. Yeah, healthcare. Um, the, now, healthcare can you know having having uh, being able to take care of your health is is a measure of safety. But we're not talking yeah. about we're talking about safety against an immediate threat, dude. You freaking moron. We're talking about safety against an immediate threat on your physical well being. You, never mind. Almost said a word. That, I'm good. I walked it back. It's very nice that you did. You're Were you going to say he was a fucking idiot? Pretty much. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Let me say it for you. Thank what you. A fucking idiot. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and he's the feminist. He's the progressive. This is right. what the progressive wants for you. Well, he's brainwashed because his his community, if he's part of the African American community, because who knows? I don't want to speculate. Um, whether he's part of that community in a real and earnest way or, or he's part of something else. Um, he's been brainwashed to believe that the state will provide everything you need and no need to look outside of the state for goods and services that might do the job better on health insurance, on self-defense, on transportation, on, on uh, f who supplies your food, and so on, and so on, and so on. So... They have people stuck in the inner cities who are completely dependent on the state, and they have them mortified. They have them terrified of each other. They have them terrified of the police. And when a population is terrified, they make bad decisions. Terrified people, upset people, nervous people, uh, people who are off balance are not making their, the best choices in their lives. And they don't have a continuity within their human relationships to, to pick Uncle Joe's brain and Grandpa's brain on what the best course for their lives are going to be in any given situation. These people are completely dependent on the state, and that's what the liberals want them to be. It is a it is a form of Jim Crow. Yeah, and I I just it doesn't matter even if uh, even if uh, 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 ninety nine percent of blacks had uh, a, a, a father and a mother in their home. You don't take your father and your mother and your brother or whatever with you when you're walking in a dark parking lot. Parking lot. You don't. Correct. They're not there. So it doesn't really matter. But I just want to just uh, point but this even out if, here. Well, but even if, well, like, if we're I, talking about I have, a, single... I have a statistic I'm bringing up. Go ahead. And the statistic is, and this is I'm looking at, this is datacenter.kidscount.org. Uh, so you can check out the veracity of this to see if it's legit. Uh, but according to this study, 67%, that's right, 67% of blacks grow up in a single parent home. Dude, okay. you're freaking talking out of your proverbial backside. So if, if this is correct, and 67% of these... Oh, I've, I've seen homes, 72%. Uh, so it's just, let's it's, just it's the it majority. <laughs> so 70% of these kids are being raised by a single parent. I would say of that 70%, 95% of those f homes are being run by women. 
So single oh, mothers. Oh, yes, yes, overwhelmingly, yes. Predominantly, yes, yes. yes. So now if these women are arming themselves and they're taking safety courses and they're take, learning, you know, like the NRA safety course, they're learning how to shoot the firearm, they're learning how to store it properly and safely, they're learning how to carry it properly, they're learning about the laws in their jurisdictions. If that is the case, then more power to them. Um, will all of them do that? I doubt it. I doubt some of them are just going to run and get a gun. And then, um, yeah, and, and, and yeah, I would say I think you and I you would agree with me when I say that if you're going to own a gun, you you better be responsible. You better learn how to handle it, or it actually could do you more harm than good. And if you are in that group and you chanced upon this show uh, with these two idiots talking. The not not one, us. This We're not idiots. Two. We're brilliant. Yeah. Actually, the, no, there's only one idiot on that segment. Yeah. Um, not me. Please, please, please look up books like – I'm not promoting this guy's books. He has some flaws with his theories, and you can dog him all you like. But look up in the gravest extreme. It's a good place to start. There's other books out there that will start you to become part of the responsible gun owners of America where you're using common sense and and your intellect to learn about proper handling of firearms, proper storing of firearms, proper use of firearms, and when it's appropriate and not appropriate, uh, it'll save you a lot of heartache. Uh, start with that. There are other more contemporary books because that was written in the 80s that have been written since then that will give you better information. But that is a really good place to start. Yes. Anything else you want to add to that? No, no. Uh, 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 on this. Uh, oh, I just, I any, just. Sorry. And any NRA safety course for firearms and handguns is a tremendous place to start. They, the instructor will give you tons of literature to read and things to come to consider when buying a firearm and storing it and using it properly. Sorry. See, see, I'm a, I, I, I am a, I'm a feminist in the sense of what the, the definition of the word feminist actually means, which, you know, the feminist will tell you, well, you know, I'm a, this is what I am. Look at, read the definition. You know, whatever the dictionary definition says of feminists, I actually like the dictionary definition more or less. That's not what feminists are. And and this guy, he, he, he kind of proves it. It's not about empowering women. It's about empowering the state. And you, what, what, what this guy is essentially telling this woman is know your place, girl. Your place is to call for daddy. You know, is to call for your husband. Your place is to is to call for the government. Your place is not. It's not to be empowered. It's not to have the ability to defend yourself against an immediate physical threat. Feminism is the idea that equality, like men and women, are treated equally. Now, I don't think that such a thing as equality is actually possible, but never mind. I like the idea of somewhat per pursuing that yeah, notion. You, you would like your daughter to have an e equal An equal shape. opportunity, an right. equal, an equal opportunity to prove her worth for her whatever it is that she wants to do to not right. be, you know, dismissed because she's a girl. I want that for my daughter. And I want for my daughter... I want to her to have the tools that will level the physical playing field because women overwhelmingly are at a distinct disadvantage at, in the physical realm with men. A gun is feminism. A gun in a woman's hand is feminism. It, it creates equality. And you're not for that, buddy. You're for a woman having to depend on on a man you are a champion of the patriarchy well well it's worse than <laughs> well, depending yeah. on a man well yeah because, i know what i'm just doing because my wife thing. depends on me for certain things and i depend on her for certain things I, i'm we, using their we, own logic against them yeah. is all i'm doing here but they're, they're, it's worse than depending on a man they're depending on an institution well, they're depending 
well, yeah. on something something that it, it, it's its primary function isn't really there to protect you. In 99% of the cases, in 99% of the cases, well, maybe it's not 99, maybe it's 99.9, or maybe it's, it's an overwhelming majority, 90 plus percent of the cases. When you are calling a cop about a physical threat, you're calling the cop to, to basically collect evidence because they're not going to get there in time. And, it, and, it, and despite their best intention, you can have the noblest, bestest, awesomest, purest, most liberty-minded police force in the world, and it's still going to be true. The police cannot protect you against an immediate physical threat in most cases. The only time they can, the, the, uh, the times that they can defend you against an, uh, a, a, a physical threat in general is if there's a prolonged threat that's going on, like a hostage situation or something along that line, or if they happen to be right there when it happens, which is extremely unlikely. So what this guy is telling this woman is call the cops and wait five minutes and just be thankful that we fought for your right to force others to pay for your health care. There you I, go. I, I want to paint this in a very different light. Okay, do it. Pre let's pretend for a minute that the people in the inner cities are not predominantly people of color. Let's pretend that for a second that the people in the inner cities are predominantly Jews. Okay? And we, we currently call these places ghettos. Now imagine a reality where in our ghettos there were Jews who lived there. And the government was making it very hard for them to get guns, just like the Nazis did. What does that say about our society? It says that this society means to control the black community as you know uh not the back black community but a significant portion of 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 what we call the black community it, it means that they they want to keep them in their place and Correct. and this guy so, is, is he's he's i mean progressives love calling conservative blacks uncle toms this guy actually is an uncle tom no no he's, he's, he's worse. actually he's worse he's worse he's a, he's an actual slave owner he, He's a house slave. Oh, he's a house slave. Well, that's kind of what an oh, Uncle Tom question. is. That's what an Uncle Tom yeah. is. It's a house slave. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that, that's what he is. If blacks want to, he he, to he is championing for his for for black people to continue to be controlled right. by by that machine. If black people want to break free of this and really empower themselves. They got to get out of the cities and they got to go back to their roots. They yeah, really do. Because this is a and, new and phenomenon, say, relatively and, new and, phenomenon. And it's not just the blacks. The, the Irish got out of the cities. The Jews got out of the cities. The Greeks got out of the cities. The Italians got out of the cities. There's significant populations of these peoples in, in these cities, but they're not stuck there. They can transition well, a lot, to the suburbs. A lot, a lot of those groups got out before the the great welfare program kicked in how many of them would still be there if they Possibly. were still there when the welfare program kicked in but they were there how welfare program the keeps a lot of people in place but they would want the irish to be controlled they'd want the jews to yeah, be controlled. absolutely i'm saying they got out those, beforehand they got out in correct time. correct right um so to empower any minority group that's stuck in any ghetto how they about just any group, ghetto. minority or otherwise? Any right. group. They need to get out of the ghetto. They need to get out of the inner cities. And regardless of how painful that life transition will be, and it will be, it's not going to be easy, they are setting up their children for a better life. And if a woman moves into the suburbs uh, from any group, from the inner city that has been controlled in the inner cities and decides to get a gun, She'll be in good company, and I recommend that people from the inner cities get guns because they'll be in good company. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you if you if you're in the inner city now and you get a gun under these laws, pray that you don't have you don't. to use it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be as much. They're going to be looking at you as much of a perpetrator as a victim. Yes. A victim. Even if you you defend your 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 life and your home. Although, I mean, honestly, though. 
if your choice is between uh, having to face the the legal ramifications of the state or immediate termination, you're probably going to go with uh, I'll face the legal ramifications of the state. So just so it yeah. You know. So there What's you go. The we have you know we have we have apartheid in in we have gun apartheid in the cities is what we have. There you go. Yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Yep. I, th I think we're done here. I think so too. I think I think we've wrapped this show I up. I feel better. I feel better now. You feel better that we got this story covered at least? I do. And next next week we will hopefully get to the raw <laughs> video of uh, uh do we have to Oh, we don't have it's to. So, we don't have to. It's upsetting. It's, it's upsetting. It's it's for for it's I mean there's so many wrong things with that video. Yeah. And, and I'm not just saying it's upsetting because they did things wrong or it's upsetting because they got died. hurt, and killed. It's just, there's something about that whole encounter that should have never happened. None of it. It was ever. There's, there's just like a million things that, that, that those two guys did wrong. It, it's like, like, you know, the people made the cho wrong choices when they crashed on the highway. I mean, not necessarily, you know, they might've been a victims of some drunk driver, et cetera, speeding, but, we know what happened. I, I just don't want to see the the car accident. Yeah, I don't want to see, yeah. I don't want to see that because it's it's a it's upsetting. Once you've seen it, you're like, okay, I don't need to see this again. I've looked at it. You've a few studied times. it. I've I've yeah I've, I've studied it. I guess I'm, but I've never. It was nothing. Not, I did not enjoy looking at it at all. It wasn't. I get that. I was trying to understand it for the show. <laughs> but <laughs> it didn't happen. But that's okay. Maybe we'll, 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 we'll. You know what? This is it. Maybe this is all that we're going to do. Uh, talk about yeah. this. In, in essence, I'd like to talk. I'd like to talk about what is going on in Europe and what the Czech Republic is doing and not doing. If you what... remember, remind me. If you remember, we should talk about uh, the European world, or the the world climate. You know, in relation to Europe, the European climate, the European gun condition, and if you lived in Europe, what should you be thinking about right now for preparation for being able to give yourself a fighting chance, so to speak? Well, the good old boys, whether you're in Greece or Finland or save, Ireland save for or the Spain, save for the just real quick, the good old boys know what to do. They're out in the woods. They yeah, you need, they got their shit. <laughs> yeah, the, the, they're a small percentage, I think. Uh, they're no, they're not they're, in the cities. No, it, the people in the cities are or who have issues. They're they're in trouble. Yeah, the people in the cities are going to have issues, and the police there are mortified if people start to get motivated to the point where they start exacting revenge on attackers. Oh, and it's and already groups. happening. Yeah, and groups. Um, you got mara you got you got marauding thugs going around and indiscriminately beating on, on anybody that yeah, looks that, Muslim. Yeah, well, you know that's disturbing, very disturbing. But what will become even more disturbing is when places of worship are firebombed. Oh, then it's it's going to be on like Donkey Kong, man. Yeah, and then the state is going to be fighting its own citizenry, while the citizenry. Perceives. I'm not saying that this is the case. Perceives that they're being attacked. Well, dude. Next show, dude. Say what you. Will. I'm going to say this part, and then we'll we'll save it for the. Rest. Say what you will. But one of the fundamental legitimizations of the state, I call it the coercive enterprise, is providing for. Well, it it was. Actually, I called it a coercive business, and you said, "Hey, maybe enterprise is better." And I said, "Yes, it is." So, it so you you, you help me, yes. So I help you a lot, actually. You, you do, you do. So, <laughs> so it's a joint effort, coercive enterprise. But uh, the, the 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 one of the, the 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 fundamental legitimizations of the state is that it provides for the common defense, and what's going on over in Europe is the state is telling the citizens, ain't no problem. I mean, I'm, 
I'm not on the other extreme either. I'm not like trying to track down all Muslims and you know, I'm no, not. But, 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 but I'm also you, you, you've got you've you've got killings that are starting to happen with some degree of regularity. I understand percentage wise, you're still pretty significantly rare that you'll be caught up in one of these. But it doesn't matter. Perception is reality, and when the state tells you with your perception, when you see. You've cre- there's there's uncertainty, there's fear, and the state is saying there's no problem. We just got to keep doing what we're doing. Let's bring in more immigrants. I mean, whether you're for or against more immigrants, the people that are living there, they're getting less for it, and and having more immigrants come in is absolutely. It's on the well. I'll save it for the next week because it's part of the. It, it's in the state's best interest to have these immigrants come in because they're playing a different game. Yes. The, their game is create, destabilize the system. So people are more dependent on the state. They're, they're trying. Well, no, actually they're trying to, uh, to, to eliminate uh, nationalities in Europe to create a, a, a European nationality. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Destabilize your population and let the state come in and tell you what to do and we'll protect you, but you got to do what we say you got to do. Well, that's going to be a hard that's sell nice. because they're not they're not doing it. <laughs> they're they're yeah. they're not meeting that fundamental need. So you're going to have to meet it yourselves. You're just gonna, and that's a good thing. I I well, I mean, it's good from the sense that it is going to encourage more people to take a self ownership, self determination, self preservation perspective. And I'm all about all of those things. So, and and you know what's funny? Whether you're in Kentucky or Georgia or Florida or New York State or California or Ohio, when you meet people from the countryside, they have a lot in common. And you could say the same thing about Finland and Belgium and Bulgaria and Russia and England. When you meet people from the countryside, they have a lot in common. And when you pe- meet people from Istanbul, London, Helsinki, Moscow, New York, Tokyo, L.A., they have a lot of things in common. The people who are going to skate through this the best are the people in the countrysides. It's the people in the cities that are going to be most vulnerable, I believe, to what the state, especially in Europe, has in store for them. It's not good. Nope, not good at all. But we'll save that for next week. So we'll on that s- note, on that note uh, we'll see you next week, either Monday or Tuesday, whichever day we happen to do it, and about the whichever same time. Day we have the energy <laughs> to get this done. But, nah, this this is fun to do. This is it is this fun, fun. But when you're beat to shit, yeah, because you can only do like, yeah uh, yeah. Dimitri can't do it until the end of the day, and by then you're. You've had a long day. And yeah. uh, this is my second show today. I may do a third later on. I'm not sure. Depending on what Bodie wants to do. I might do a third show. I might. Probably not. I think I'm going to go to bed. And with that. Well, I'd like to say. Ooh, it rhymes. And what's that mean? is good night there, lads. And. Nasastekala is. Be well. Be well. Be well. Fair de well. Good night.